Okay, uh, this is what I want to talk about. And originally I wrote this chapter because after, at the end of my book, some people said that it's a position against monism. And indeed it is. Uh, I'm very much in favor of uh, dualism and expectations, of course, are not things which are real out there. You cannot touch expectations. So it's another world than the world which you can observe. And it's precisely my point uh, that we can from there come to, to watch a calculus of redundancy. And I will try to make that point more clearly. The eventual conclusions I put up front because I think uh, the story will be complex and perhaps they give guidance. My point will be that cultural evolution operates as a feedback on biological op op uh, evolution. And biological evolution is taking place from an origin to the present. While the cultural evolution is based on meaning giving and meaning we provide to events with the perspective of hindsight and with reference to other meanings. And these meanings are codes, coded, and I'll make that point more explicitly with reference to Shannon and Weaver in a later slide. Uh, so this is a bit anticipating about the conclusions. Uh, against the era of time, the system generates redundancies instead of information. And uh, this, this coding of the, uh, communica in the communication uh, is different from biological codes. So this is all about how it is different from biology. The codes are not hardwired like DNA in the biological case. So we cannot see the codes. We can expect them to operate. The codes are the evolutionary uh, part. The micro operation, I will make that point, uh, I'll put forward double contingency, which is from Parsons originally, which it goes back on American pragmatism and Husserl and Schutz. Ego expects Alta to entertain expectations as ego entertains them him, him or herself. And this makes it immediately clear that this is not an, a micro operation like the homo economicus or action, a rational actor. It's not a person, it is a relation in which expectations are entertained. Building on this micro operation, society evolves as an order of expectations. And this order is more complex. And we can analyze that complexity. I, that's my thesis now. Uh, in terms of both the horizontal and the vertical differentiation. I'll come to that also in a moment. The horizontal differentiation particularly uh, I, okay. The horizontal differentiation, of course, relates this to my triple helix thesis, which I will also introduce in a moment. In the background there is Niklas Luhmann, yeah, who magnificently specified in 1982, although I don't agree with the conclusion, but it is a vision which is worth repeating, no matter how abstractly formulated a general theory of systems, a general theory of evolution, and a general theory of communication. All three theoretical components are necessary for the specifically sociological theory of society. They are mutually independent. I agree with that point. The next sentence may, is a bit more problematic. The decision question now becomes how are the various theories related to one another? What unifies them? How must the theory that integrates them be constructed? I doubt that it can be integrated. I think the integration is a, a normative background going back to religious aspirations. We have to do with systems which are not a priori integrated and not ex post integrated. Um, so this is where Luhmann says this. It comes from uh, a very early work and comes also from his discussion already in the time of his discussion with Habermas. Yeah. So what is it? Can you, can you hear? Yeah. Okay. 
So this is what I want to talk about. Here we have people who have communications and there are historical patterns in the communications. That's all observable. What I'm interested in is how these communications relate to horizons of meaning, how meaning is being given from the perspective of hindsight, and how a reality here, which you can call res cogitans, in di as a different from res extensa, this is not the world of, uh, of expectation, but the world of observables. How can we think those relations together? How can we relate the historical patterns with the evolutionary dynamics, which is taking place at this level? Luhmann, for example, and also Margaret Atcher made that, makes that point, is that history is the uh, morphogenesis of the system, the system then becomes important. And Newman, for example, formulates then, communications cannot be observed directly, they can only be inferred. I would even go beyond that, but I think that this is already the point, that we can take the agents away, and we are, this is our object of study. And this object of study, we can take the agent away because the micro operation, as I said, is double contingency. So we, the historical patterns in the communication we can observe, they are phenotypical, they form trajectories, and they relate to an evolutionary dynamics. And this is very different from the biological, because in the biological, the, his, in the biological evolution is always also historical. Well, here the historical is only one subdynamics, and the, it is genotypical because it is not observable. We have to construct it, we have to hypothesize it, and different from the trajectory level, it creates regimes, so it creates selection mechanisms. The codes operate, the codes operate as the coordination mechanisms of the social system, but also as the selection mechanisms. <coughs> determine whether something can be said. Meaning is provided from the perspective of hindsight, with a backward order, or arrow, but with reference to other meanings, and these other meanings may be differently codified. And it can be a variety of horizons of meaning. The horizons of meaning concept, of course, is back, goes back to Rousseau. At the same time, you have to develop the theory of communication, going back to Shannon. Weaver added that there's a semantic layer. This is the old Shannon picture. Weaver added this, it's my reconstruction. And I would go further and add this. There's the communication is not only here coded in language. This is the organizational level, but there is also a self-organizational level of horizons of meaning, for example, the sciences or technologies or markets, in which codes operate in the background, which then structure the use of language as a means of communication. Language, of course, not only language, but everything which is at this level, which is more or less introduced by Weaver already. And of course, in the background here is Husserl, because we have here the dynamics of the self-organization of the communication, which is not constrained, and the historical constraints, which are shaped in actions and organizations. So this is the, here the people play a role because decisions have to be made. So this is a repeat of what I showed in the previous slide. So you have relations in the network space, which create this variation, stochastic also sometimes. In the, these relations can also be correlated. Note that here in the correlations, we also count the non-relations, the zeros in a vector space. There in the positions, meaning plays a role, not in the relations. So this is a different space than the network space. We call it the vector space. We have means to analyze that. And in the background, in these correlations, you can think of them as principal components. 
which are in the background of those correlations, which create the codify the meanings and make them uh, preferential, preferentially attached or not. That's the vertical differentiation, and of course in the background is Herbert Simon's theory, and because this is more or less Herbert Simon's picture, although Herbert Simon never applied it to the social world in which we live. At the same time, you have horizontal differentiation. Uh, C is, su is sufficient for understanding the dynamics in terms of subdynamics. This has been claimed in several pieces. C allows us triadic closure, and here the triple helix can be elaborated as, an old, as the vertical dimension. The vertical and the horizontal dimensions can operate upon each other, and then these codes are selection environments. Let me go back perhaps. And these selection environments uh, operate different from the variation. I, I don't know how to go back, so I leave it here. Um, the variation creates all the time entropy, probabilistic entropy, information, uncertainty, however we want to call it. At the same time, there is already in the system always redundancy, also in the biological system. This is from Brooks and Wiley, Evolution and Entropy. You, you know that picture probably, it's well known. And Brooks and Wiley say this has historically not happened, but it could have happened. What happens here is impossible from a biological perspective because it is no longer historical. But here we can see, uh, metaphorically at least, that we are able to make things which were previously impossible possible, for example, flying or whatever technology you want to use. So what, the, what is done by those codes when they operate is they create empty possibilities, empty boxes, zeros in the setup, and we have means to assess the number of those empty possibilities because in the Shannon type theory, these zeros are not counted. Zero times the log of zero is all against zero. They, they don't play a role. But in the vector space, they are constitutive for the events. And as I showed a moment ago, we have on top of the network space, a vector space, which is then structured by the codes in the background. Okay. To show you how three or more interacting codes can uh, develop uh, information or redundancy, information and redundancy count uh, sum up to the maximum entropy. I use these pictures, which is this is from Udanovic. I like this even better. So you can see the black and white. So if there is forward movement, if there is generation of entropy. There is organization, there is uh, action taking place. If it is moving backward, giving meaning, organizing the meanings, it is redundancy in the other direction, and we can use a minus sign. And I've elaborated that in several equations, but I'll leave it here uh, more at the level of saying it. So I've here added the concepts to it. It is the opposition, you could also take it the other way around, but it is the idea that this, that there's a e cultural evolution against the arrow of time, organizing what the biology as substratum makes. For example, of, an excellent example of such an organization, I'll come to an end. I'm busy uh, at the moment, are you? I'm sorry? No, thank you, I'm busy. Okay. You can see, this, see the same thing in the uh, uh, theory of anticipatory systems. If you look at it, uh, the bifurcation parameter from the biological perspective, it goes to the four. Most people will be familiar with that uh, picture. If you add the anticipatory system, you can define systems which operate in terms of future states, that's in terms of expectations, and then you see there is another realm here, which has not been brought to the fore in most of the 
uh, outside the world of computation of anticipatory systems. This is all just an appetizer and an hopefully an opening to the discussion. Is that, a, is that okay? Yes. Or is it uh, too much? It's probably too much. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Let me take this back as the background conclusions. We lost the... Uh... Sorry, so uh, Bernard, I'll... I have several questions, but I'm waiting for other people maybe first or... Go ahead. Or can I start? Are, are you familiar, um, I, I think you may be with the work of Otto Selfs? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, and, and Michael Gertrudis de Vijver. Gertrudis, yeah. yeah. Gertrudis yeah. de Vijver. Yeah, that's a center in Belgium, isn't it? Say that again. That's a center in Belgium. I, I didn't catch the word before. Um, centrum, in, in center. Yeah, but before you said, um, I know about Otto Seltz through the work of Michael Terhaak, and and he um, he kind of uh, developed a parallel with Karl Popper's uh, search light, light theory, and and made also a connection with the work of Karl Bühler. Are you familiar with? Yes, I am a bit, but that's action theory. Yeah, but it's also communication theory. And um, maybe I first should say my, the, the, the area, uh, sorry, the, the context in which I make these comments. I see, uh, I, I personally think you're saying something very important. So then the question is, how do we get that in the mainstream out of the academy? Because you're giving a sort of frame of reference uh, to think about communication and, um, and evolution and, and the interaction between the three systems. So then the challenge is how do we uh, just, uh, uh, make sure that those ideas are spreading and that people become familiar with them. And I kind of think of it as an opportunity just to make connections with the work of other people and then do some translation, but to kind of um, show that this is not some idiosyncratic idea, but that there is a that there is something intuitive to it. So, um, so that's the reason I, I I bring up Karl Bühler, his organon model of communication, and and also this uh, uh, auto cells, and and there is actually a tragedy associated with it because they. Carl Bühler had to leave Vienna and he came to the United States, but he never recovered really from relocating. And so he had a lot of great ideas in Vienna, but it kind of, uh, they didn't go anywhere. And the same with Otto Seltz, uh, he had to run away from the Nazis. And so he ended up in the Netherlands, um, but he made enough contacts. And I think he got, uh, killed by the Nazis, but he made enough contacts that, do you know Michael Terhaar by any chance? No, I don't. Okay. He's, I think he's in uh, cognitive science or something, and he may be in Amsterdam or in Rotterdam, but I'll look it up. But either way, um, that was an observation then, uh, but, but my question was going to be uh, the role of metaphors in your model. Have you thought about... Uh, yes. Putting let, a let theory of metaphors or something, yeah. Let, let me add one question for Lloyd. Uh, uh, especially the, the concept you use uh, called the horizon of meaning. Uh, uh, I, I think I asked you before, uh, I, need, need, I need a more clear definition of uh, whose meaning and whose horizon and are, are, are all those horizons the same for the different observer 
or, or each observer has the different horizon. Uh, I would like to hear you talk more about that. Okay, I think these are two very different questions. So uh, let me begin with Yanni's uh, question and then come to yours. Um, maybe, maybe they're not so different. The issue is that we have to talk also about counterfactuals, Karl Popper is making that point, and counterintuitive. Uh, for example, Shannon's uh, definition of information, Weaver uh, noted that it was almost bizarre, and he also used the word counterintuitive. So in a certain sense, um, it's not about what happens and how we can directly relate to it. It's always mediated by models and with a cognitive dimension to it. It's not exclusively cognitive, but it is scholarly scientific modeling which we are doing. So it is not, uh, and that relates to your question, uh, 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 I, I don't get your name at the moment, uh, about whose meaning is it? It is not a who who is carrying the meaning. It's the codification who carries the meaning. Yeah, it's the codification of the meanings emerging as a kind of, I use the word principal components, or you can also say eigenvectors, which carry the meanings, which structure our opportunities and this is deterministic because it's selective and it is structural. Uh, our opportunities to uh, participate reflexively in that structuring of the meaning to various extent, of course, depends upon, upon our communicative competencies, whether we can hear the, and the make and follow the distinctions or, or that we cannot. Uh, so, and uh, we as as agency have to step in to make translations between them. If we are able to entertain more than a single code, we can probably make translation translations. But then we are in the observable domain because we are part not only of the rest cogitans but also of the rest extensa. Actually, we combine those two in the body-mind uh, theme. Is this more or less? I see you knocking yes, nothing yes. Fernanda is raising hand. Yes, I've been waiting to, to ask some questions, make some comments. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Lua, thank you very much. I have a much better understanding of your, uh, of your model and your theory. Uh, than I've had uh, in, from past presentations. Um, that's not to criticize you. It, it's, it's the problem for me is, is to take your model, your theory, and transpose it somehow into the models and theories I have, which already cover similar topics. Sure. It's hard to, to throw away what I already know. So I look for the analogies, I look for the similarities and, and the differences where there are any. So, so my comments are around that level to, to, to map what I already understand to what you're now telling me using this formal model, which I think is very elegant. First of all, the dualism you're talking about, this reminds me immediately of the analytic distinction Gordon Pass makes between what he calls P individuals, psychological individuals and mechanical individuals, which are really biological ind individuals. I call them psychosocial unities and uh, biomechanical unities. So the cultural, as we, you're talking about, is this the, the Ray's cogitans, I think you use the term. But it, it's, it's the, uh, uh, it's the, it's the um, not concrete, okay? So there's a very yeah. similar distinction that Pass makes in his conversation theory between the embodiment and the processes of meaning construction and communication conversation which, which go on. So also in that respect, I mentioned that um, uh, Pascal also has a, uh, uh, 
an understanding of, of meaning construction, which he refers to as conceptualization. And I was thinking so far that um, this horizons of meaning metaphor, which comes from Husserl, or Lumen via Lumen, uh, I, I'm uncomfortable comfortable with it because, as Jason said, who's, who's, who's seeing this horizon? Where does this horizon come from? So I prefer the, the, the concept of a conceptual system. This is a system of concepts in past terms where, where concepts are procedures for bringing about, maintaining, recognizing, recording procedures. They are our, our mental repertoire of things that we know and things that we can do. So um, I'm more happy with that notion. I'm also happy with the notion that um, conceptual systems can be shared collectively in a community, in a culture, in a, in a society. And they also that every individual in conversation with themselves constructs their own personal conceptual repertoire. So for me, this is a very elegant model of a kind of recursively applied notion of con conceptual systems from, from the individual person discussing with herself up to the whole culture or society. I say cultural or society because looking at the literature, it's very hard to dis distinguish between how these terms are used. So that, that's yes. those thoughts. Um, Let me first take this one okay. and you, you go back from there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, of course I know that there's Pasch in the background when I meet you. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, even on your advice, I, I read Pasch yeah, many years ago. I thought for myself, and that was part of uh, uh, the effort of the last year, I had to sit down and write it out in a book. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I suspended all other activities and and wrote it down in the book. And therefore, uh, for myself, it has become clear. Uh, I think the importance of uh, using terms as horizons of meaning is that it is above individual. It is at the above individual le level, and it is actually Husserl who took us there with intersubjective in, in the intentionality. And what is the dynamics above uh, at that level? And Pask never made that step. He remained with the psychology, essentially. Actually, Husserl also uh, had the favor. It, it remained at the psychological level. And he said, we have no means to go beyond that. This, the same holds true, by the way, there's a beautiful Freud citation in a meeting opening uh, in a workshop in Vienna where he was no longer allowed to have this in the open air because of the, the Nazis were already on the, on the doorstep. He said, uh, I, I have always been fascinated by this social dimension and others go on the barge and explore it, but I remain on the coast. And I, I understand that people want to remain on the coast because it is a slippery uh, affair. If you go for the specifications of expectations and then dynamics, making the point that they are un not observable. <sighs> yeah. May How I, can I, we make an inf may I, may I uh, continue? Yeah. With respect to PASC, PASC is, is a theory not just of the psychology, it's also it's the psychosocial. So as I, I said, sure. he, talk, he talks about the possibility, he talks about conversations between cultures. And it, the, 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 his, key, his key theoretical innovation is he makes a distinction between the psychosocial as systems of concepts, conceptual systems, the psychosocial and the biological. And he points out that one biological individual like Lute or Bernard may, may embody many conceptual systems and be in conversation with himself about them. And right. I would call these reflections. Yes, well, it's reflections of an above individual dynamic. Well, however you talk about it, it's, they're in a dialogue, they're conversations with oneself. So it's reflective, definitely self-referential, reflective. Likewise, you can have a, a, a conversation at a cultural level or a, or a group level, like a family or an organization, where uh, the, the conversation is a system of, a conceptual system where people have expectations of expectations they're engaging in a conversation but it is 
whereas the conversation is it can be seen as a system that reproduces itself, like culture reproduces itself, it is embodied in a many different biological individuals. So at the moment, as you and I are talking, we have two bodies, two mechanical individuals, and we are engaging in one conversation. There is a we, as well as the I and the thou. And this an this invocation, to... There's an invocation of a common framework, and that framework is at the super-individual level. And well, that structures our communication. The point yeah. here, Luke, you can't... I, I know, I know that this is a different point from yours. No, no, I mean, I mean, if, you, if, you accept, if you accept that the individual is, is in conversation, then there's no distinction yeah. between the conversations at the super It's not the individual which is the core point. The, por the core issue is the discourse yes. between the individuals, the between individuals which is evolved. Yeah, not the yes, individual. The individual yes, is only reflexive. Oh, no, no, no. And, and generating the variation. I mean, as we are talking... Generation to be, to be selected by the communication. Yes, but as, as we are speaking, you know, as a we, I am conceptualizing with myself what you are saying, and what I am saying, and what you are making of I am saying. It's a very complex series of... of processing, conceptualization with the two of us. And from the, from the perspective of, of an, an objective of someone standing outside, an external observer, we are a system. And this can be recursively applied to the whole culture. So- No, no that's that not my point at least. It is not my point. I know that Schutz makes that point against Husserl, precisely that point about the we relationship that should, particularly Schutz point, as long as we were born from women, we are still biological and the psychological is then sitting as a, as a horseman on the horse, that's Freud again. The question is to take the next step from Freud and from Husserl to double contingency as the, as the micro-operation. So it's not a we as a system, it's the we as an hypothesis. But it, it's, it's yes. Um, entirely, entirely what Pask is saying. You're saying <laughs> exactly the same. Luke. May okay. I uh, may I interrupt? Uh, I I heard you use the word codification, and that made me think of our Popper's uh, World Tree, Luke, sure. and 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 Bernard. That's also for you a comment. Like Pask, does he have a World Tree? A world of artifacts of texts, and I'm assuming you you mean a text a loot that is traveling across time and space, and allowing people to communicate with one another without being in the same place. So the artifacts are really a very important element in any theory of, of communication. So, of course. Um, Margaret, so, very, sorry, I'll let you finish. Uh, no, I'm, I'm ready. I, I just want to uh, throw in that idea and I, I give credit to Karl Popper. Uh, my, my, my simple answer is, in past terms, uh, there's, there's the world of, of, if you like, there's the world of physical things. The bi he calls it the biomechanical, because we sit in a world of the body, my body, sits in a world of artifacts, computers, bicycles, books, yeah. texts, all these things. And it's the psychosocial which makes use of them interprets them, inhabits them, learns from them, and so on. So uh, in, in past there's, there's, the, 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 there's the biomechanical world and there's the psychosocial. You can yeah. also translate this into Bateson. It's not so difficult. Yes, he has the same me, points. Yes. And makes okay. it clear. Please let me uh, add an interesting <laughs> observation. Uh, just but I want to answer first to Macrieta, if you oh, mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I agree, there's Karl Popper in the background. In, in my book, I spent a whole, whole chapter on objective knowledge, <coughs> which is Karl Popper's point. But for, in Karl Popper's explana explanation, there's no dynamic. It's not specified how, how it works, this world tree. It's just something we have to assume, and it remains there. And I think we can go beyond that, using 
the communication theory and the sociological theory and the evolution theory in combination as Niklas Luhmann has proposed it. So I, I look forward to reading your book, but I just want to throw in that Karl Popper actually uh, wrote an entire book about the dynamic uh, that the uh, the evolution of communication of okay. knowledge. Yeah, that, that he makes a connection with uh, this an evolutionary process that people learn to argue at some point, and he introduces argument as the fourth function. Yes. And it's very interesting. It's like practically everyone has ignored that. And they just say, oh, well, argument is just the third function. There's nothing special about what Pop says. Now, I know the book. I read it. Yeah. And I know the scheme which Pop introduces. It is an, a scheme of an individual. It's not a scheme of the paradigm. May, yeah. May I, and, may I, may I add an interesting observation? Uh, Every one of us are looking at a screen. Uh, we currently have uh, five heads, five brains. But for me, I see 10, uh, ten heads instead of, of five, okay? Behind the lawyer's head, there is a little lumen sitting over his head. And uh, behind the Bernard's, I mean, on top of Bernard's head, there's a little Golden Pask sitting on top, and on Jamie's head, there's a little car purple sitting on there. And on my head, Stuart, I will be sitting here, so, but he's coming here already. So, so he, he had, uh, Stuart, do you have a question for, you have a question for Lloyd? Not right now. No, not right now. Well, okay. That's a pity. Uh, okay, Stuart, on Stuart's head, there is a little hands from Forrest to sit there. So, Jason, Jason. so that's what I mean, the different meaning, a different uh, horizon of a meaning. Or, or in, in each of us have a different horizon that we put those figures uh, in different priority. And we... May, may I answer? <laughs> I, I think you now take them as philosophies. And I think what we should do is to take them operational as research programs. And then Niklas Luhmann opens more possibilities, in my opinion, although he also fails to do many things because he doesn't appreciate information, he doesn't appreciate statistics, so he fails on all kinds of points. And I hope to take that further from there. But yeah. it is not Luhmann per se. Luhmann here is a didactic stove, Stroman. Just, just to comment okay. on that, Jason, you're, you're, you're partially right. I myself style myself as a, a cybernetician. So I, I look for the, the similar, I try to unify where I can try to understand, which is how I began the discussion with Lut. In the particular case of Lumen, I have many reservations. I do not okay. like its, 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 its <laughs> conceptual framework at all. Um, to show there is an alternative, I've just uh, the short paper by Pascal, The Conversation Theoretic Approach to Social Systems. I posted the reference into the chat line. I know the paper. Okay. Can I?